Hi, I'm Lisa Genza, and welcome to the Freedom Kitchen Kids series brought to you by Oxford Community TV and the Four County Community Foundation. It is truly my blessing and my honor to bring this cooking series to you and to your family. And for the many kids who are taking our cooking classes, these are things that you can do at home. Today, we're gonna have some fun and make some whoopie pies. Who doesn't love a good whoopie pie? Now, I went gluten-free 13 years ago, and then also found out I had to be dairy-free, and I was very, very sad. I didn't know how to make all of the things that I loved, so I embarked on a journey to still enjoy my life even though I'm gluten-free and dairy-free. In my classes, you'll find that I often offer you gluten-free and dairy-free options. One, of course, I don't want to cook anything with gluten um, because I don't want to be exposed to it. But two, I realize many people feel better when they take away gluten. And even if you don't need to be gluten-free or have someone in your family who needs to be gluten-free, just by having different options in your kitchen is beneficial for you and your family. So today I want to introduce you to a product called Sprout Bake. You might have heard of this product. We've carried it here. Um, it is a gluten-free, dairy-free, refined, sugar-free batter. So we could make our whoopie pies with any um, cookie batter. Today, I've chosen to use Sprout Bake. So we're using the double chocolate. And what I'm going to do is I am going to use a biscuit cutter so that all of my cookies are the same size. Now, Sprout Bake started because uh, the founder, Elena, was looking for um, a nutrient-dense muffin batter that she could prep. You know, I'm big into food prepping. So she was prepping on the weekends because of those busy weekdays raising kids. And she wanted to make a batter that she could refrigerate and then bake fresh throughout the week. And she experimented with many different batters, um, many different flours, and she landed on sprouted oat flour and sprouted almond butter. So sprouting is not something that we've talked about yet in this series. Sprouting is what our ancestors used to do for all grains, nuts, and seeds. By sprouting, I mean we just need to soak it in water because there is um, an enzyme inhibitor on the outside shell of a grain, nut, or seed. And that enzyme inhibitor is what keeps the nut, the grain, or the seed intact, but it makes it hard for us to digest. So for her own kids' health, um, Elena created this batter using sprouted flowers and sprouted nuts so that it was easier for her kids to digest. So often many of us that end up teaching health classes or cooking classes or create a healthy food product, it's because of our own experience and our own experience led us to find something better. So in my case, I had to. In her case, she had to find a better alternative for her daughter. Now this batter, which started out to be a muffin batter, we um, now know can be used for anything. So we're using it today to make cookies. But we can use this batter, sprout bake is what it's called. Uh, we can use that for cakes, cookies, muffins, or breads. Now, you can see all my cookies are the same size because I used my biscuit cutter. Um, now, when using a cookie cutter or a biscuit cutter, um, it's helpful if you spray the inside with some avocado oil and then your batter won't stick to it. Um, I'm also baking these on parchment paper because we want them to come up nice and easy. Okay, we're gonna stick these in the oven. So what is the best part of the whoopie pie? Is it the cookie or is it the cream? 
We're going to make the cream when we come back. Do you love local sports? Whether it's Oxford High School or Parks and Rec, you can buy copies of each game. To purchase your copy, call us at 248-628-9658 or give us an email at manager at occtv.org or talk to us at the next game. Hopefully we'll see you there. All right, we're back. Now we're gonna make the cream that goes inside of your whoopie pie. So how do we make cream if we're dairy free? Well, maybe you've done this before. This was new for me and when I discovered the magic of cashews, I was super excited. So today we're gonna make cream, some people call it cashew cream, for the center of our whoopie pies. So what I had done is I had soaked the cashews in water overnight and then I strained out the water. So again, this episode is an introduction to sprouting, talking about soaking our grains, our nuts and our seeds. And by soaking them, we make them easier to digest. So by soaking our cashews, it also makes them softer uh, so that we can make this into cashew cream. Okay, we're also going to add to our cream coconut cream. Now, if any of you are familiar with full fat coconut milk, you'll know that the cream rises to the top. And so what I did is I refrigerated this overnight. And now I have the cream is the hard layer on top. And it's so hard that I'm actually gonna use my knife to cut it. And there's our cream. See how thick that is. Now under this, there is milk the coconut milk, but the cream rises to the top. And for this, we're going to use the cream. You can just purchase coconut cream. It comes in a smaller can. Oops, see I'm getting some of the milk and I just want the cream for this recipe. Now the rest of this I can use in a smoothie. I can put it in the refrigerator, use it for another treat. I am not at all concerned about uh, losing that or wasting that. Okay, now we're going to add a quarter cup of honey. Now, let's be honest, I don't usually measure unless I'm teaching. So I always sort of eyeball, but there's a quarter cup of honey. Now we're gonna blend this until it's nice and creamy, and then we're gonna add some fruit. Now, if you were all in, uh, at class today in person, I would let you pick the fruit. We could do cherry, we could do blueberry. So I chose for us today, and we're going to do cherry. All right, so we've got that in our high-speed blender. So cashew cream is very easy to make. Um, you will see in other episodes where we make sour cream, we make nacho cheese, we can make lots of things out of cashews. It's pretty surprising. Um, we can make creamy soups. We can make a creamy carrot soup. Um, we can make a creamy um, cauliflower soup. And we can use cashews to replace the dairy. Okay, so here's what our cashew cream is looking like. Now we're going to add to this. We're going to add a cup or two. So this recipe, which you'll have available to you, or you can message me on the Facebook page for it, We'll make more cream than what you need for your whoopie pies, 
but this makes a really good pudding. So, all right, we're gonna add two cups of sweet organic cherries. And we're gonna blend this. So we can use frozen or we can use fresh. It doesn't matter. And frozen berries have the same nutritional content as fresh berries. Again, I still encourage you to buy organic. We've talked about the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. Any fruits or vegetables on the Dirty Dozen list, we want to make sure that we're purchasing organic or not purchasing at all. Um, it's a strong recommendation, I know, and I don't, um, I don't think it's necessary to purchase organic everything. If it's on the Clean 15 list, I do not spend the money to buy organic. So avocados, bananas, there's many things I don't buy organic, but berries are on the Dirty Dozen list and I always buy those organic. Okay, so here is our cream. Now, in order to spread this onto our cookies, we'll want this to chill. So I'm going to pour this into a bowl and chill it, and we'll be right back. All right, so we're back, and we now have our cashew cream has been set and chilled, so it's a little bit thicker. Um, whenever we're using um, coconut oil or coconut cream, it will firm up in the refrigerator. So don't worry if you make your cream and it's very thin, it needs to set in the refrigerator to firm up, um, which is one of the things I absolutely love about coconut oil. Coconut oil will really firm up in the refrigerator uh, even more so than the coconut cream. Um, now we've cooled some of our cookies here and what we're going to do is we're going to turn over two of them and we're going to frost them. So when the kids want to cook at home, know that spreading is one of the tools, so um, one of the skills that they could learn. This is a fine motor development skill for them to spread. So here in our cooking classes, we encourage the kids to utilize knives, to utilize vegetable peelers, to practice um, cracking eggs, to practice spreading. These are all skills and the sooner we get our kids cooking in the kitchen, the sooner that we empower them to make decisions for themselves and be responsible for their choices. What we find in our classes here is that um, because the kids are involved in making uh, the food, they're more enrolled in the process, they're more engaged, and they take a sense of pride or ownership in what they made. As a result of that, they'll try things that they normally wouldn't try. So we hear all the time from parents, well, she doesn't eat that at home, or he's never eaten that before. But there's a sense of ownership when they're involved in the process. And that's the most important thing, right? As a parent myself, I know we want our kids to be happy and healthy. And so teaching them now how to be happy and healthy. And part of our happiness is derived from freedom freedom of choice, freedom to participate. And that's really what Freedom Kitchen is all about. Freedom Kitchen is about helping to set you free and our kids free and to help them become more responsible and empowered for their own happiness. So with that, you'll see that I've got some cherry cream filling here. And then I'm gonna put my whoopie pies together so they're all roughly the same size, remember, because we use the biscuit cutter. But this is a great way to get the kids involved in the kitchen. I know I'm a mom. I was a busy working mom and it was always difficult to let my kids in the kitchen with me because I just wanted to get it done. Um, so now maybe that's why I teach kids now because now my kids are grown and I don't have that opportunity anymore to cook with my kids. But here we go. Here's our whoopie pies. This is a whoopie pie with a cherry filling. Now we could use any fruit. 
Um, again, this cashew cream filling is very easy to make. It's just coconut cream and cashews with some honey. And then we had some frozen fruit. You could do mixed berries, strawberries, blueberries, and then sprout bake. Sprout bake is a great gluten-free, dairy-free option. And especially for us busy families, we don't always have time to make everything from scratch. Keep these in your freezer. You thaw them out. They're good for seven days when you thaw them out and you bake them as needed. So you can bake your cookies, your muffins, your breads, or your cakes with them. Sprout Bake has five different flavors. So if you were to experiment with their five different flavors and all the different fruit choices that you have, um, you would have countless options here for whoopie pies. And I really do look forward to seeing what other things you come up with. Let's get creative in the kitchen and have a little bit of fun. Uh, this is something that our kids can do. And of course, for all of my students in my classes, this is something uh, that you'll be doing in class. We're back and now we're going to make something completely different. We're going to make veggie burgers. Now I am a big fan of expanding our palate and broadening our horizons and trying new things, whether it's trying different flours or different protein sources and even for our kids, right? Um, their palates are developing so we want to keep introducing new ingredients to them and there's a number of different ways that we could make veggie burgers, um, black beans, chickpeas, typically your legumes because they're, they have protein, but they're also starchy. So they'll hold together a veggie burger. So I've also talked about high quality ingredients before. There's two spice companies that I recommend or endorse, and that would be um, Simply Organic, which is a Frontier Co-op brand, or Epicure. And I absolutely love, um, now I've done veggie burgers a couple different ways and it can seem tedious and difficult. And especially when we're, we're cooking with our kids, um, anything to make it a little bit simpler. Um, this is still a high quality uh, mix or ingredient that we're going to use today. Um, from Epicure, we're going to use the veggie burger mix, which is a chickpea or garbanzo bean base. But it has all your seasonings in it already we're gonna add to it today our veggies. Okay, so here's our mix. And I'll just tell you it has chickpea flour, black beans, onions, red bell pepper, nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is not the same yeast that we put in our baked goods or our bread, but it has a cheesy flavor to it. Um, this has sea salt, baking soda, herbs, and black pepper. And then we're going to add to it today. So we're going to start by adding a half a cup of hot water To our mix. We'll go ahead and get this thickening here. And now we're going to add to this our veggies. Now when teaching the kids, I always have them prepare their workspace. So this is called Mize in Place. We have everything out and measured and we have all of our tools available to us. Um, we're going to use one of my favorite tools today. Now at home, we can use a hand grater to grate our zucchini and our carrots. We're going to add zucchini and carrots and some yellow squash. Before we do that, I'm actually gonna add three tablespoons of lemon juice to my mix here. Get out any of the lemon seeds.
All right, at home you can use a regular grater. This is my manual food processor here. And I am going to grate my zucchini. Oops. All right, so I have a small zucchini. I'm going to do just a little bit of this yellow squash. And then I am going to do a little bit of this carrot. Another thing you can use if you don't have a grater for the kids, they can practice with the vegetable peeler. So then we'll get nice, thin, small pieces of the carrot in our veggie burger. All right, look how colorful that is. Isn't that beautiful? So we have our green and our yellow and our orange. Now I'm going to add one cup of cooked quinoa. So I took the liberty to make the quinoa. There's a half a cup of quinoa. And another half a cup of quinoa. And now I'm going to mix this all together. So the chickpea flour is going to do most of the binding in this. With the veggie burgers, it comes down to um, needing something to bind it. Unfortunately, a lot of the veggie burgers at the grocery store in the freezer section have gluten in them. And I'm not a big fan of gluten. We seem to be having more and more digestive issues and autoimmune disorders. And a lot of that is tied to gut health. So I look for things that are easier on the digestive system than gluten. Now, look at how beautiful this is. We have our veggie burger all mixed. And now I'm going to heat up my burner. And we're gonna fry these in a little bit of avocado oil. Now we want a high heat oil, a high heat oil that doesn't oxidize. When an oil begins to smoke, when it reaches its smoke point, it becomes a carcinogen. So we don't want our oil to smoke whenever we're frying. And then when these veggie burgers are done, all right, it's getting nice and hot. When our veggie burgers are done, we just treat this the same way we would um, a hamburger. So we will plate this with a bun and with all of the veggies that you prefer on your hamburger. So with our veggie burgers, we have to use our hands. And the kids know as long as we're going to cook something, we can touch it with our hands. Because any of the germs that have gotten on our veggie burger will now be cooked off in this hot grease. So this is a very simple recipe to make with the kids. It's a great way to get more veggies in them. All right, I'm gonna finish cooking these. And when we come back, we'll plate them and see what they look like.
So you see these don't take long at all. It's not like cooking raw meat. So these will cook very quickly because it's chickpeas and black beans and vegetables and quinoa. And so these are a plant-based veggie burger. We just fry them up. Um, you could potentially try them in an air fryer. I don't have one, so I have not tried that. So I'm frying them uh, the traditional old-fashioned way. Just make sure you're using a high heat oil. Uh, coconut oil, avocado oil, olive oil, or walnut oil will be your high smoke point oils that are safe to fry in. Okay, so now that we have our burgers fried, we're going to go ahead and plate a burger. So you know Miss Lisa would never use a wheat bun, but for many of you out there who still use wheat, uh, this is a regular hamburger bun. We're going to take one of our burgers and we'll go ahead and plate that. We can now add to it our tomatoes, our pickles, if you like onions or lettuce, whatever you typically like. If you like ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, you would put all of that on your burger. And here we have a veggie burger. Now, the reason that I like to teach this class is because I am um, wanting families to expand their horizons and their taste buds and try new things. It is also a way to save time and money. This takes less time to make and it also costs less. If there were to be a meat shortage or if you didn't have uh, ground beef in the house and you needed to whip up a quick dinner, this is something that can be made in less than 15 minutes. And it's still very tasty, very yummy. Um, but you're also getting vegetables into your family that they might not normally eat. So by adding in the yellow squash or the zucchini or um, you can add carrots, you can add whatever vegetables you have in the house. Um, and by adding those vegetables to the burger, you now have gotten more vegetables into your family. So remember to eat the rainbow. When I teach the kids programs, I always talk about eating the rainbow. We want our plate to be colorful. We need the vegetables because they have vitamins and minerals that our body needs. Um, so this is a great way to get our vegetables and maybe trick our brain a little bit that we're just eating a burger. So um, have fun with it. Again, I did use a mix today to show you that for, for busy families, um, this mix, which is a chickpea flour and black bean uh, mix, uh, will come together very quickly. You can make this meal in 15 minutes or less. Um, by all means, you can make that from scratch. But if you have any questions about any of the ingredients today or where to get Epicure, make sure you email me at lisa at freedomkitchen.net. And until next time, bye for now.